The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said the twelve disciples, apostles, a, a disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Anyone who engages in peak performance learns how to handle fear in a hurry. Uh, whether you're a professional musician or you're an athlete or you're a captain of a ship, you, uh, you quickly learn how to, uh, how to handle fear. And uh, one of the things that, that we learn is that uh, fear and excitement have essentially the same kind of bodily response. Our, you know, our heartbeats become elevated, our breathing becomes a little bit more rapid, we we shoot a lot of sugar into our uh, body, uh, blood stream, so that we can enter that fight or flight uh, response. I learned that uh, that as a musician, I, I I better figure out a way of getting a hold of it. And I read a book called Peak Performance, and it was written by a man whose name is David Green. Uh, David Green was an Army Ranger, and he. Uh, he shared what he learned as a ranger with uh, members of the US, U.S. Olympic diving team. And later he got uh, scooped up by performing artists who uh, wanted to try to figure out how they could sort of calm themselves a bit and, and deal with their fears. One of the things he talks about is, is an Olympic diver who, uh, who had spent hours and hours practicing this one particular dive from a platform, and, and they had mastered it. And, and they had it just down to such precision that, that they could predict that they would be able to come out and, and perform this dive with excellence. And it happened that they entered a, a competition, and they looked up on the scoreboard, and they saw that they were behind in the competition. So they figured, well, they'd better jump higher than they've ever jumped before. And they'd, they'd better take a, a run down that uh, board faster than they've ever gone in their life. And, and they'd better just throw themselves through this. Well, what they ended up doing is they ended up trying to do a dive they had never practiced. They never practiced jumping higher. They never practiced running faster. They never practiced trying to throw themselves through this thing. And, uh, and they weren't ready. What existed for them was actually an opportunity, an opportunity to see that they were behind and, and, and they could come out and do this thing that they just loved doing. They could come out and do this thing that, uh, that they had worked so hard, they had practiced so, so long to be able to bring their best to it. They, they had an opportunity 
to, uh, to know the joy of flying through the air and to enter that water with barely a splash, uh, they could switch fear by simply changing its intent and, uh, and finding a, a course that would point towards excellence. Jesus today sends out his disciples on a mission, and he tells them, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid that I'm, I'm sending you out to do something that you've never done before. Uh, don't be afraid that uh, you're only going to bring one tunic and you'll have a staff. And you're, Don't be afraid that you're going to rely on people for their hospitality. Uh, don't be afraid there's only going to be two of you uh, at any one place at any one time. I'm sure it's going to be great. Don't be afraid. And as... As certain as it is that Jesus was saying that to uh, his early disciples, Matthew was saying that to the community uh, that was built around his teaching and his writing at the time. Uh, Don't be afraid. Uh, I know you're persecuted. Uh, But they they may wound your body, but they'll never destroy your spirit. You can wound the body, but you can never, ever destroy the spirit through the strength and power of God. Depend on God. Trust. Trust in God. And, and, and those fears are uh, a myriad. They don't go away. The fear that we might be entering another war, the fear that we, uh, that we are not going to have enough savings to... Uh, to give us the kind of retirement that we hoped we'd have, the the fear that uh, someone we love is is ill, the fear that uh, our children uh, graduated from college with uh, considerable debt and they're struggling, Uh, the fear that our our car needs a new muffler. There's no shortage of fears, Uh, but they, they don't have to overwhelm us. They don't, have to, uh, they don't have to change our sense of identity. We don't have to lose trace of the fact that God is with us and that God's love is greater than any fear and that life is greater than the life that we live in these bodies, that the dignity of the human spirit is, uh, is truly a sacred treasure. This hyperbole about families and Jesus' uh, reminding us that fathers will turn against their sons, sons against their fathers, daughters against their mothers, daughters-in-laws against their mother-in-laws. I mean, it just... Matthew again. I mean, Matthew's writing, writing to people that are experiencing this. They're, they're experiencing the cost of their faith. They're experiencing what it costs to be a Christian in the world. They're experiencing that, that, that battle that, that can go on. A commentator that I read this last week mentioned that uh, that same kind of battle can go on inside churches. That uh, that that fearsome battle that happens in families that we don't even want to face, we, we don't even want to think about. We have battles that sometimes come up in churches that we don't even want to face, we don't even want to think about. And so we, uh, and so we retreat from uh, speaking the truth of our faith. We retreat from uh, trying to speak the truth in love. We, we retreat from conflict this commentator said that, uh, that the churches are struggling and, and in some places dying because they're f- afraid to upset the apple cart, to rock the boat, to, uh, to cause someone to feel ill at ease. They're afraid to stand up for truth. They're afraid to stand up against bullies. I sent out an article this last week to our leaders letting them... Uh, 
know that the, uh, that the church in the Episcopal Church Foundation, a, a great resource of, of our faith, uh, is concerned about the presence of bullies in the church and, and those kind of emotional bullies, uh, those people that do spiritual warfare and just kind of wear you down and, uh, and they don't, don't seem to lose their energy at all. And what I learned this last week as I was studying is that, uh, is that we have a chance to stand up. We have a, we have a chance to, uh, to define our boundaries. We don't have to be afraid of conflict. It's, we can change the intent of it. It's an opportunity to uh, define our boundaries. It's an opportunity to let someone know who we are. It's an opportunity to tell people what we believe and what we value. It's an opportunity to uh, stand with that other person in their shoes and, and have a chance to get to know each other. Um, fear of conflict. Don't need to have it. Fear. Fear loses its power in the presence of the love of God and in the presence of uh, a trust that God's love always goes with us. And yes, our bodies are frail and our bodies will break, but nothing through the love of God can possibly break our spirits. Amen.